I deserve to have a traditional wife. They want to go be a passport, bro. And I'm like, bro, you're fat, you're broke, you don't deserve a traditional wife. You need to level up. The same way they want a traditional girl. The girl, she's going to be way more traditional back in my country. So trust me, she's not marrying you for love. She's marrying you for your green card. So are you against passport bros or? I understand the fundamentals of it for those who have done everything in life to make sure they are a man. But if you're not a man, I don't think you deserve that. Hello, YouTube. It's your boy, the passport bro, wingman, coming at you again with another YouTube video. And this video is in response to the clip you just previously previously seen in which there was an Asian woman on one of these, um, I believe it's on Sterling Cooper, uh, Cooper's, um, one on his channel. It might be his channel with like somebody that kind of partners, partners with him a lot. But anyway, as you saw in the clip, there was an Asian woman on there pretty much saying that um, she understands the principles of what it means to be a passport bro, why people are becoming passport bros. And, uh, and pretty much she, you know, kind of has a negative view of it. She just thinks that it's a bunch of men who don't want to improve on themselves and are going overseas to get women that they don't deserve. That That's pretty much to sum up what she's trying to say. And uh, and I think it's just very, you know, it's very uh, it's, it, it falls back to the same stuff we've been hearing. Shaming, shaming men for going overseas, saying that you guys just need to work on yourself. Stop complaining about the women here. You're not getting results because you're not work. You know, you're not working out. You don't have a six figure job. Blah blah blah. Same same old foolishness. Um, and I, you know, I've addressed some of these points in some of my previous videos, in which I've said before. When you look at things such as you know um, Tom Brady, who is um, you know manly man, million dollars a year. But Yannis still, his wife broke up with him because he wasn't spending enough time at home. Even though he has, you know, millions of dollars, he's going out on the road to bring the back money, but she has lots of complaints. She divorced him. And a month after she was seen with this Brazilian jiu-jitsu um, coach, which lets you know that, that she was probably already flirting, dealing with this guy before she, before she had wound up leaving Tom Brady. And in addition to that, you see Johnny Depp, who... Um, as far as like handsome man, he's like at the he's like at the you know he's in the top percentage of handsome men, millions and millions upon uh, millions upon dollars, fame, all types of women want him. But in spite of that, Amber Heard cheated on him while they got married, and I think it was probably from what I read, um, allegedly, allegedly within the first few months of them being married, uh, slept around on him with Elon Musk. And I say I was to say that all, there's all this talk about if you guys would just only improve, if you guys would only improve, which we show, which we've you know debunked many times. I mean, if you go on Tinder, they literally said that the women only find about three percent of the man attractive. And I mean, you're talking about, you know, I mean, you you hear all the time women complaining about that they want a man that's like six feet tall, six pack, and if um, let's just say. I believe they said 50 percent, 15 percent of men are six feet tall or taller. So that means that a good percentage of those men they found unattractive fell right within the range that women, you know, within the range of height that women like. So they pretty much, you know, rejected a lot of those men, um, you know, and, 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 you, and there's plenty of cases of guys who are somewhat attractive and tall that will tell you constantly again about how in spite of that, they don't get any type of respect. The woman is, is constantly testing them, constantly trying to run over them. So, um, and this just falls back into the whole dating coach thing. And this has been debunked like several times. A lot of times these dating coaches, you never really see their receipts. A lot of times when you do see their woman, I mean, she's not, in many cases, she doesn't really look like a model. I mean, so I'm, and in many cases, when you look at the students that these dating coaches have, when you look at the type, you know, because you, you want to see the final product. Okay, so after... Doing three months of courses with you. What type of women are these men now, now dating? And when you look at the caliber of women they're dating, they could have probably got these women without the help of these dating coaches. They could have just did this on their own. So it doesn't really. Um, I just don't feel like the the juice is worth the squeeze. The squeeze in many cases. So myself and many passport bros, we've just opted out and just said we'll find better quality overseas. We'll actually find women who are more traditional and want to settle down. And so what she does is what a lot of women try to do to try to debunk this. She tries to say, well, I'm from a traditional background. I come from that country. I know the women there. I know they're like this, you know, and when they're, when they're messing with you, it's not because they like you. It's only because they like your green card. And what's so um, comical about this whole situation is 
she mentioned that um, there was a guy that she wanted to be a passport bro. And she told him, well, you're too, you know, broke and fat to be a passport bro. Notice she, she used the word broke, which means she, in order to be, to deserve a woman, you got to have money. But here she is talking about women overseas wanting men for one, wanting men for money. So you got women. So, I mean, I, I just think it's, you know, I just look at the hypocrisy of all these women who talk about their man needs to make over a hundred thousand dollars, but at the same time, they're shame. They would even, they just say the women overseas, let's say even if they did want a green card, they wanted money. But here you are in America, the man and a man makes hundred thousand dollars a year, but you want to shame the women overseas for wanting a better life and wanting a man who can provide for them. It's really the same thing, you know? So it's just that, um, yeah, it's the same thing. And, um, and, and on that, and the whole point, and, and pretty much what she tried to speak to is passport privilege, I guess. That's kind of, kind of what she's trying to say. Oh, they only want you to passport once they get, once they get your passport, they get, they get here, they're going to leave. And I've debunked this many times. You can actually look this up. Uh, 80% of marriages between Americans and foreign spouses, it has an 80% success rate, which means once they get here, they don't just leave. They don't just leave. Like she keeps claiming they do. What she failed to realize is, and, and, a, and a, she supposedly says she's it's part of her culture. In many of these countries, the divorce rate is very low. They have very, delo uh, very low divorce rates. I believe in Colombia was like 10%. Uh, I believe in Thailand, about the same, about like 10% divorce rate. And think about that. The men over there, they don't have that much money. These women will stay married to them. And uh, like I said, very, very, very low, low divorce rate, d divorce rate. And then when they, like, as I said before, when they get over here, 80% success rate in which the women, they, they don't leave. And what she also fails to realize is that um, when they did a, because uh, here's the other thing. Um, if it's all about money, then what do you say about all the foreign families that come over here? For example, we got people going across the Mexican border, flooding this country. You had the Ukrainians that flooded over into Poland. Did you hear about a mass mass divorce that suddenly had, like, what I'm trying to say is when all the Ukrainian women who were married ran over to Poland, did they instantly start divorcing their husbands who are not making that much in Ukraine? Um, same thing with the, the Mexican women, the Mexican women who come over with their spouses. When they come over to America, do they just divorce their husbands? Did you hear about mass divorces? taking place as you know do you hear about in general do you hear about mass divorce amongst immigrants you don't hear hear about it. in fact those families tend to be more stable than american families this has been documented and in many cases what you'll notice even when the immigrants come in here you notice they have their own little enclaves you like you have little cuba you have little haiti you have little italy all the immigrants they, they tend to be stay within their own communities so it's not like once they get here, oh, I'm, I'm, all these rich men, we're just going to, I need to break away from my husband. Let me go find me a rich American once I get here. They don't do that. Their their cultures are built differently. In many cases, they're coming from cultures that don't have that much money. So as a result, since they don't have money and materialistic things, they find other things to invest in like family and friends. That's why they have like the sand in South America, um, Mikasa Ikasa. So Mikasa Ikasa. Yeah, was it or you know something to that effect? But basically, what I'm trying to say is, um, very hospitable people, um, and, and yeah. So I mean, there pretty much there's a difference in coach what she's not understanding. The other thing she's talking about, she because she talked about fat and broke, and Dennis Sperlin talked on this. And he hit he hit the nail on the he hit the nail on the head when he said this. He said pretty much the sum of what he said it was only privileged women in Western countries have the luxury of, of, um, of choosing men based upon looks versus over what a man can do for versus what a man can provide for the family. They have the luxury of just scapegoating and, uh, you know, for the most part, you can only do this in Western countries in any other country, like say Brazil, Colombia, uh, the Philippines, where in many cases, you know, people are just making enough to get by. And in many cases, you need your family. You need your family, your family, your spouses to survive. Um, most of the women in, in these countries, they're very happy and, um, and content with having a man that can provide for them for their family. They're just more content to have that because it's very rare to have that in their country. As I said before, for example, in Colombia, 20% um, of the population is responsible for about 55% of the income there.
Most people, they barely, minimum wage is not enough for them to survive. So in many cases, you need another spouse. Now think about not only another spouse, but imagine a woman having an opportunity to date a spouse who makes um, what the 20% makes in their country. Think about how, what type of opportunity that would be for that woman. She feel like she hit, you know, she, it, it will be a wonderful opportunity. Here's a guy who can provide for me. And she would definitely choose a guy who's, like she said, like she tried to say fat and ugly. They would choose that all day over, um, you know, uh, living, you know, doing the bare minimum of just having an average life. But keep in mind that when we go over these countries, we're not, we're not forcing ourselves on these women. You know, no one's forcing themselves on the women to fight. In, in fact, in some of these countries, they still have the male, quote unquote, male order bride industry there. There's still women looking for husbands, actively looking for husbands. These are not men necessarily reaching out to them. These women are reaching out to the men. Um, and as I said before, there's been many cases when I've been in like Thailand where I've been approached by, I was approached by a taxi cab driver there and he wanted to introduce me to his daughter. So in many cases, you know, um, yeah, so, so, and, and, and so in, in many cases, um, it's a win-win for both parties because in a sense, because, because, because there's other things she doesn't talk about. And I think I addressed this before. While on one hand, she's trying to say, uh, we don't deserve those, those quote unquote quality. Here's a key word, quality women. We have to examine what, what is she, what do we, what does she mean? And what do people mean by this quality woman? Because if their quality, what she's trying to say is that we're trash and she feels bad for these quality women because they're getting men that's trash. Even though I told you before, in order to travel to Asia, you have, these are men who have, who have, who are men's of means. And it, yeah. And, and, and as I, and as I was saying before, um, as big truck had big truck reviews had already stated, like in many cases, the men who are, who are passive bros who are traveling, these are quality men. Like I said, they'll afford that thousand dollar trip. This is not cheap. There was a study that was saying that um, the aver I think like the average household couldn't survive a five hundred dollar emergency. But you got men flying, taking thousand dollar plane trips, staying in the country for a months for months in. These are men. These are men of means. And again, as as I was dressing before, um, she's saying that the men are pretty much for the most part. She's upset that these quote unquote quality women have to take these. In her eyes, these trash men, uh, not to mention that in certain countries, such as in the Philippines, some of the darker Philippines are seen as less than some of the women there who have curly hair, hair are seen as less than some of the men prefer the lighter skin, uh, the lighter skin, thin haired women. And so um, as one woman had stated, it was like a woman that supported the passport, bro. She was saying that in many cases is a win win for both parties because. Um, the password bros come up there and we scoop up a lot of the women that a lot of men sometimes there, they don't even really want. And like big truck was saying is that they have a culture of, I believe it's called scoot and shoot, which is almost similar to the American version of pump and dump. They have that there going on in those countries in which a lot of times these men will just, they're not really trying to marry some of these women. They just want to tap that and go about their business. But the password bros, we come there and we actually value these women. We actually find them to be of quality. We actually want to support them and marry them. And you would think that this woman, quote unquote, who's in favor of women, when she sees us going over there and supporting these women and marrying them, you would think that she actually would want to, uh, you know, support us in doing this. But instead, she'd rather trash us, call us trash, uh, while in comparison to some of these women who, who, are, who we are dating, some men there might think those women are trash, or even some of the women who are there think that these women are trash. We don't think that they're trash. You know, we're, at the end of the day, the Passport Bros, we're about finding love. We're about finding traditional women. So in many cases, the, the, the women who those men think are trash, we in many cases, I would uh, trophy, you know, champion those women over some of the, uh, over a uh, I'm willing to say about 70% of the American women here. I mean, it just not, there's just not a lot of quality here in America. You know, a lot of the women have lost their traditions. Um, don't want to be on a man's programming. Uh, very anti-male. Uh, don't want to, don't want to contribute anything to the household. Just think the man is supposed to do everything, pay all the bills, do the chores. They, they, they're just supposed to show up and that's supposed to be it. So a lot of men aren't really having it. So, um, so I'm not saying that I think these women are trash. I actually think these women are quality women. Now, some of the men there, because they're so spoiled, because they have quality women here and there, um, you know, it's very difficult for them to kind of really find value in a lot of these women because they've been brought up in a, um, most more so like in a, 
country where men are celebrated, whereas us, the passport roles, we come from countries in the West where men, like the value has completely diminished and the government is trying to do everything it can to weaken, um, you know, to weaken the value of men. It's also to break up households. So um, it just it just works together. We just it like passport roles and these foreign women, we're just a perfect fit in my in my opinion. So, um, so that's that. So that addresses this whole thing about passport privilege. And I'm going to take it even a step further and I'm going to end it with this. Um, and I meant to address this other video as well. I'm actually going to tie that video into this video because it's going to actually help me put a nail in a coffin on this woman, her talking points. She said that, um, men don't deserve, we don't deserve those women. So we don't deserve the love that they bring. We don't deserve the nurturing. We don't deserve them as our brides and that kind of thing. Okay, so anyway, um, and I'm going to leave a link in the description to this video. There was a woman recently from Britain. I guess you can call her passport sis. She came down to Ghana. She came down to Ghana. And uh, I guess she was riding a bus. Something happened with the bus where they had to pull over. She wanted to cross the street to find, I think she was trying to find another bus. So anyway, as she's crossing the street, and this is on a busy intersection. It's like very busy, cars going by fast. So I guess a, a car was coming. It almost hit her, but the guy stopped just in time. And as it stopped, his, his car brushed against her bag and it knocked her bag back. So she was very upset. She told the guy, you almost tried to hit me. She slaps the guy's car. Then she walks away and comes back and looks at him and she saw he had a cross on. And she said, you're wearing a cross, but you're acting like a demon or something to that effect. So, um, so allegedly all this, you know, this is actually her words. So anyway, she gets out of the car and, um, she gets out of the car and then as she's walking, the guys, I guess the guys were very upset. So two of the guys to get out of the car, they approach her. And I guess the guy who she addressed, started beating her he started slapping her start you whatever start attacking her or whatever so she's there getting attacked she starts screaming help me help me help me people she's looking around at the people none of the people would help her none of the men wanted to help her because they didn't want to get involved they didn't want to get attacked she fell on the ground balled up and said y'all need to help me the guy was beating her down eventually i guess the guy walked away some guys helped her up and that kind of thing and and here's the thing you know number one me nor any of the passport roles, we don't advocate any violence against women. We don't do that. Don't lie. We don't advocate uh, violence against women. I'm not happy that this happened to this woman. I don't take pleasure in that. I don't call names. Um, I don't take pleasure in this happening to this woman. But however, there is a lesson to be learned in this. And the problem is that a lot of Western women, not just American women, but some of these Western women, they think that all those uh, rules and um, the culture there in America that, that applies to men is supposed to apply in other countries. And the men in these other countries are supposed to act the same way that American men do. But it just doesn't work that way. The reason why a lot of this stuff is happening in America is because America is almost like a, like a welfare type of country. We have lots of welfare programs to prop women up. You got lots of funding into police. Um, there's, there's strict law and order in this country, but that doesn't work so much in other countries. In fact, a lot of times the, uh, gangs and cartels pay off police officers, police officers are not getting paid that well. They don't really care about doing their job too much. If you go down to Columbia, ask anybody, if somebody steals your, um, your phone or something like that, or something gets stolen for you, ask, ask them how helpful the police are there. Only thing they're going to ask is, are you okay? Did you get harmed? You fine? Okay. That's it. Go about your business. That's pretty much police in there. They only come after the, the crime happens and just to make sure that you didn't die. As long as you didn't die, everything's okay. They're not really going to help you. So good luck with that trying to, you know, because because first of all, they, like I said, they're not really getting paid that much. So in many cases, they're probably just trying to get home to their family. So they're not really trying to get that involved in a bunch of violent disputes, which is why you'll notice in these countries, the men there a lot of times will put their hands on women and nothing will happen. Sometimes they'll, they, I, I, for, for what I've heard, They've even been cases where the women have gone to the police, told them, told them that the husband or whatever was beating on them. And they, they told the woman, go back to your husband, try to work things out. They try not to get involved in any of that. So I said it to say that that woman had a very, um, very hard culture clash in which culture shock in which she left her country of Britain. She came down into Ghana. She thought Ghana was like Britain. And she had no idea that those men there don't, they're, they're not, they don't come from matriarchy. 
uh, matriarchal societies. They come from societies where where men where the man's word is 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 the rule. That's where they come from. So here here you are in this country talking to this man like he's a dog, uh, you know, talking smart to him, unaware that uh, the men there, I mean, they run things. They, in many cases, I'm not going to say there's not any law and order, but the laws are very lax there. And people can get away with lots of crime. You're not safe there. Um, in many cases, when you, when you leave America or the West, you go into these other countries, you left your privilege at home. You're there now in their country. You apply by their rules. And in many cases, you have to keep your head on a swivel. Uh, justice is not the same. You may, you may not get justice. Um, so you got to kind of, you know, bear it out on your own. Hopefully you're tough enough to look out for yourself and, and you're close and your loved ones, which is why, and why did I bring this into this, bring this video up? She talked about not deserving a woman. But, th but here this woman is getting beat down and brought in, um, it might have been nighttime, whatever. Let's just say, let's assume it's afternoon. Getting beat down in the afternoon, crying out for help. In her mind, she deserves to be helped by the man. She deserves to have the covering that a husband or a boyfriend would give a man. She deserves to have the protection of the men in the community. Uh, she deserves for the police to come there, look after her, arrest those men, and do all the stuff like that. Uh, but um, unbeknownst to her, she's no longer in her Western privilege, welfare driven country. Instead, she's in another country that is um, almost, uh, I'm not going to say like the wild, wild west, but, you know, in many cases, street justice kind of rules. When you're in a country where street justice rules, would you feel safer with a woman leading or a man leading? Would you feel safer with a man leading or a woman leading? In many cases, women there, they value their men because if they're not going to get justice from their police, who's the next best person to give you justice to make sure you're okay and protect you and give you covering? It's going to be your husband or your boyfriend. And in many cases, this guy who she said is fat, who is fat. One thing you know about fat people, when it comes to boxing, what, what weight class are they usually in? They're not in the featherweight. They're in a the heavyweight class. Now, which one of those classes do you think is probably better to protect you in a country that kind of runs by street justice? Your featherweight boxer or your heavyweight boxer? All she has, all, all you have to really do is just, while she's down there, and I'm not trying to make light of her getting punished or beat up or anything like that, but imagine, imagine you're on the ground, you got this guy, because she, she mentioned the guy was very built. He was built and he was tall. You got this tall, muscular man beating you down, pounding you into the ground. Do you want this scrawny featherweight guy, or or you know, or you remember that fat guy you talked about, that fat broke guy? Which one of those guys you want to now come save you? Which one of those guys do you think you deserve to come look after you? You want that scrap, that scrawny little guy, or that fat guy? You want that fat guy with all his with all his weight to get this guy up off of you? Because you know, one thing about you know whether you're fat or you're muscular, you can take a lot. Of, you can take a lot more abuse than somebody who's a little thin. Which is why, um, in my opinion, a lot of times in some of these countries, especially like South America, they don't mind their men being a little chunky, a little fat. In fact, I actually have heard a woman in America, even in America, that says she actually will prefer a, man, prefer a man to be slightly more overweight than him just be skinny. Because obviously she'll feel more, well, in her case, she's talking about, you know, for like sexual reasons. But in many cases, that guy has a little bit more weight to throw around. He probably can handle himself a little bit better. Not to say, me, myself, being a slender guy, not to say that we can't handle ourselves, but what I am saying is that um, it's not seen necessarily as a bad thing, especially in these countries where you need male protection and security guards. You you go in a club, you need security. There's a big, strong, in many cases, you might see a bouncer there. The guy is re really, really huge. You know, um, you know, do you, do you, do you, uh, yeah, which one of those you're going to feel more protected by? You know, you do have like Jet Li, you do have Bruce Lee and that kind of thing, you know. And as I said before, plenty of guys, and again, fight is not all about being big, you know, as well. But what I'm trying to say is there is value in him even being big. So for you to say that that cancels him from being picked by a woman, that's just nonsense. And we already talked about broke. He's not broke because he took a thousand dollar plane trip to Asia, thousand dollar plane trip to Asia. And in some cases in the country where there's no real rule of law, he might, you might, you might be in areas where now, not so much for men, more so for women where women are being kidnapped, uh, trafficked, 
and that kind of thing. You're going to want somebody to look after you. That fat guy you talked about, you might want, you might need him in this case. You especially going to need him if you're in South America. You, you especially going to find value in him. So I'm willing to say he's more deserving of a spouse than you are who cannot cook and clean and got all these uh, standards and got all this additional debt that you're bringing in a relationship. I think he's more deserving of a spouse than you are. And he's fat and broke, like you said, but he's not fat and broke in another country. In fact, in another country, he is now uh, rich and well able to take care and protect his woman. He's able to cover his woman. You are uncovered staying in your country just chasing guys because uh, they got swag and they're pretty, you know, but they don't bring anything to the table. So I'm going to leave the description to that video in the, in the description. I'm going to end in on that. So I just shredded this woman's talking points all together. She has no idea what she's talking about. This is just another another American woman hating on the passport bros. Never seen so many women who are. Never seen so many unbothered, bothered women. She's just another one of those. So I'm going to end it on that. Until next time, this is your this is your boy, the Passport Bro Wingman. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you have not. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the notification bell. I think I'm shadow banned. I'm not even sure. But please help me out. Please support me. Please share the video. Please leave comments. And until next time, this is your boy, the Passport Bro Wingman, signing off.